TU100, My Digital Life, Sense and Sense Ability. We're going to make a simple Christmas game to help you learn how to use variables in your sense programming. Variables are commonly used in computer games for keeping score and setting a timer that runs down to zero as the player tries to achieve their allotted task. Here's a working version of a game I've invented called Christmas Lumberjack. I don't think it will rival Grand Theft Auto or Medal of Honor, but it will help you to understand how you can use variables in your programs. In this game, you play the part of a lumberjack tasked with chopping down Christmas trees for your very successful garden centre business. The idea is to chop down the Christmas trees as fast as you can in the time allowed. The more trees you can chop down, the higher the score you make. You chop down a tree by clicking on it. By the time you've watched this video and had a play around with some of the ideas and techniques that you see, you will be able to create your own simple games in Sense. To keep things nice and simple, we're going to start making the game with just one tree that needs chopping down. Programs are often successfully built up from smaller working units of code. When a programmer gets one small piece of code working satisfactorily, he or she can then duplicate the code or use it as a template or model for applying in the rest of the program. Starting with simple code, this can then gradually be built into a more complex and therefore more interesting program. You'll be able to download the starter program of this game from the Region 5 forum and it will contain the simple graphic elements that you'll need to get started. As you can see the graphics aren't very sophisticated and you can create your own from scratch if you want to but by all means use my graphics to save time. In the starter program there are only a few bits of code. You can see that I've got a sprite called tree and a snowy winter scene for the background on the stage. Clicking the green flag control block makes the tree sprite appear on the stage and a second control block for the tree sprite will hide the tree when the sprite is clicked. So far so good. Now we need to make the game a little bit more interesting. Well, One thing that makes a game more interesting is when the player is up against the clock and has to achieve a certain task or number of tasks before the timer runs down to zero. So creating a timer is the first thing we're going to use a variable for. I'm going to click on the stage icon to select it as I want my timer script to be located there. First I'll just grab a hat block. Starting the game with the when green flag clicked block will make the timer start when the game starts. I'm now going to make the first variable that the game needs. When the stage is selected, any variable we make can be used to make things happen on the stage or in any of the sprites we make. A variable of this type is known as a global variable. I'm going to make a variable called timer by choosing the variables palette and selecting make a variable. When you create a variable, you should give it a meaningful name. Notice that when you make a variable, its watcher appears on the stage. I'm going to leave the watcher visible there because that will suit the game. It will give the game player an idea of the time left as they chop down the trees. In some games and some programs, you don't want the watcher to appear on the stage and you can hide it by clicking the appropriate button in the variables palette. In programming, it is useful to think of variables as labeled containers. So instead of having to tell the program, now use the number five for this part of the program, now use the number four for this part of the program, now use the number three for this part of the program, etc. All we have to do is tell the program to use whatever number is in the container. Here's the finished script for the timer. I'm going to run the program in single step mode by clicking up here. This slows the program right down to allow you to see what happens as each instruction is carried out. It's a great tool for helping you to debug your programs. As the program works through its list of instructions, when it comes to an instruction that says it has to do something with whatever is inside the container or variable called timer, the first time through the repetition it will see the number 5 and will take one away from it and confirms this by displaying the number 4 in the variable watcher. The program will go round again, this time it will see the number 4 in the container or variable and take one away from that and will display 3 in the variable watcher and so on.
When the number in the variable reaches zero, the repeat until block in the script tells the program to stop. I'm not going to finish off the rest of this game in the video, but here's a quick view of the scripts that control the tree sprite. Once you've made these scripts in one sprite, you can make a whole forest of tree sprites by simply right-clicking on tree 1 and clicking duplicate. You can drag the sprites anywhere you like on the stage. There are all sorts of extras you can add to your program to make it more interesting and more challenging. How about making different trees have different score values? Can you think of a way to have some trees worth more than others? Perhaps the higher value trees could be a different colour or shade of green. Make the time allowed longer or shorter. You could add sound effects or even Christmassy background music. Have fun with this program and let us know how you get on. I'll post my attempt at a final working version of the program in a week's time or so. If you get stuck or need some more help, then just let us know in the Region 5 forum. Bye for now.